typical American high school. But the corridors are empty. The classrooms, silent. But through the halls lurks something sinister. Well, nothing sinister here, except the Black Death. Well, not really the Black Death, but something that looks like it. Welcome to my classroom. I'm Bruce David Janu, and today I'm going to show you how to give a student the Black Death. Well, at least the appearance of having the Black Death. It's really quite simple. First of all, you have the makeup. Three tubes of cream makeup that can be taken off with water, red, purple, and black. A package of fake skin, a bottle of black tooth out, a bottle of liquid latex, foam applicators, and eye makeup applicators. Oh, and the most important thing of all, the foam latex buvo. Gross, huh? Oh, and you need one other thing, a student. This is my victim, I, I mean my volunteer, Kate. How are you feeling today, Kate? I'm pretty good. Well, that's going to change very quickly. Now, the first thing we must do in order to make Kate look like she's from the Middle Ages is to give her the appearance of working very hard, getting very little sleep, and having a bad diet, and everything that went along with the Middle Ages. So what I'm going to do is give Kate some dark circles around her eyes. And we do that by taking some of the black cream makeup and then applying it to the eye makeup applicator. Just a little bit will do. And then you take it right underneath, kind of blend it right underneath her eyes to give that worn out, tired, I wish I were dead look. Now you notice I put just a little bit on because I don't want it to glob the black on right away. Just want to give the uh, overall appearance that she has dark circles under her eyes. We're going to have to uglify her a little bit more. And uh, to do that, take some of the fake skin. It's great for making molds and warts. You take it into your hands and roll it around in your fingers until it gets to be a little ball. And then you put that little ball of fake skin wherever you want. I prefer the nose. Now, uh, under these lights, it's a little bit noticeable, but we're going to be adding some makeup to it a little bit later to make it more blend in with the skin. And if you want, and I usually like to do it, I like to add another one maybe on the cheek. So we'll do that as well, give Kate another mole. Now, considering the diet of a person from the Middle Ages and the lack of dental hygiene, we're going to have to do something to, uh, to Kate's nice teeth. And to do that, you take the liquid black tooth out. And there are two ways you could uh, do this. And uh, it comes with a brush, so you could apply it with the brush. But if you're going to be using this over and over again in the classroom, it would be a good idea to first apply this to one of the foam makeup applicators for, that you use under the eyes. But if you do use the brush, make sure that you clean it in alcohol before putting it back into the bottle. Okay, Kate, smile for us and tip your head back a little bit. One thing to remember, while you're applying the makeup in class, it may be a good idea to tell a little story in your booklet, you have some dialogue that can be suggested for using this in class. You could give your volunteer a name, a place, and a little story behind the person. 
Ooh, oh, you are, <laughs> you are looking good. I think it's pretty much dry. Close your mouth okay. and let's see. Okay, open it up again. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Okay. That's pretty dry. You're, that's you're looking stylish. Okay, so now Kate <laughs> is uh, a member of the Middle Ages right now. Well, let's give her the Black Death. The Black Death was caused by a bacteria called Yersinia pestis that lived in the stomach of fleas. And uh, since fleas were quite common and bathing uncommon, it was quite probable that Kate was infected with fleas, lice, and so forth. Rats were commonplace in her home, probably in her bed as well. So let's say Kate was bit somewhere by a flea. What happens is that flea latches onto the skin and it starts sucking the blood, but the Yersinia pestis in the stomach causes a blockage, which caused the flea to throw up. Thus, when the flea throws up into Kate's bloodstream, it throws up not only its stomach contents, but also the plague. About three to six days later, after the incubation period is over, Kate would start coming down with symptoms of the Black Death. And the first symptoms would be a rash. In order to give the rash, we take some of the red cream makeup again and put it on a clean foam applicator. Just a little bit, blend it onto the applicator itself. Don't put globs on it. And then, over her face, we're going to just gently put a rash. The rash would appear all over her body, and it would be accompanied by, by fever and by pain in the lymph node areas, in the, in the neck, the armpits, and the groin. Now, you could put some um, of this red makeup, too, on the neck. But make sure that you leave an area of the neck free of makeup, because that's where we're going to be applying the latex bubo. So I'm going to put some rash here on her neck. What's going to happen as the plague progresses, the blood vessels under her skin are going to break causing a bruising type appearance that's going to coagulate and then change colors, first to purple and then to black, hence the term black death. Now comes the most critical part of the whole experiment. That is applying the latex bubo. Within a day or so, there's going to be painful swelling in the neck area. And according to chroniclers, this swelling got to be the size of an apple or an egg. In your kit, you have the latex bubo. This is what we're going to apply to Kate's neck. And this does look kind of painful, and it was. Doctors would lance these buboes occasionally and squeeze out the stuff that's inside all the pus and blood, but that didn't really help too much. So you apply the latex liberally to the lip of the bubo. Make sure that the latex is shaken completely. You don't want runny latex. It may take a minute or two to make sure that the bubo is completely covered in latex. Now once you put all the latex on the bottom of the bubo here, let it sit for a few seconds to get a little tacky so that it's easier to place onto the neck. I chose latex because it's easier to clean up. You could also use spirit gum, but spirit gum can be a big mess and it could ruin the bubo eventually. So latex is better. OK, it's going to go right here on your neck. OK, I have to hold it here for 30 seconds or so just so that it, it clings to our neck completely. And when we're done, when this is all set, we're going to take some of that red makeup again and kind of blend it around the edges of the bubo so it's harder to see the seam. OK. Just stay right there for, for a moment. OK, it's attached. And now it's important that she doesn't move for about a minute so that the makeup or the latex can adhere to the skin. Again, I'm taking some of the red makeup again and putting a little bit more this time on the foam applicator. And I'm going to go around, kind of blend it in. 
you may have to continually put some on the applicator. This way. Now that looks relatively painful, but more pain was to come because that that swelling there was was extremely painful. But as the blood vessels start breaking under the skin, they're also breaking in her lungs and she begins to start coughing up blood. Her fever is getting even worse, and she becomes very delirious. So now we're going to have to add some more makeup to her face. This time we're going to have to add the purple, because as the blood vessels break, it turns into a bruising type appearance. I'm going to use the same applicator that I used the red on, and I'm just going to put some purple and kind of push the purple into the foam. And then take some of the purple and go to the areas where I put the red, such as on the cheek and blend in some of this purple makeup. Maybe a little bit on the, on the chin, forehead. You can make it kind of splotchy at this point. On the nose even. Now if you want, you could take the clean area of the foam latex pad and just make sure it's, it's blended. Get rid of some of the larger glumps of makeup and blend it together. Now, in the final, final days of this. Um, the mortality rates were about 65% and usually it took about three to four days for the victim to finally succumb to the disease. And she would succumb to the disease uh, usually alone because uh, people didn't tend to hang around others that, who were you know, dying from the Black Death. So we're going to add the black now. And we add the black in the same way. You may want to use a clean applicator this time. We take the black and put it on the end of the applicator and put some I see I put a little bit too much there, so I'm going to use the clean area and just kind of, kind of blend it in. Black up here, blend it in. Black over here, just kind of blend it in. And don't forget the neck. We did forget to put some of the purple on the neck, so we'll do that. We'll do that right now, around the base of the bubo and on the neck itself. Okay, back to the black. Now your, your bubo is already colored, so you don't need to add a whole lot of makeup to the bubo itself, just around the base to kind of hide the seam. Now if you'd like, since Kate is in her death throes right now, and she's coughing up blood, uh, we could add some blood or some red to the base of her mouth, as if it's coming out of her mouth. Just add in a little bit here, onto the corner of the foam latex pad. Just gonna add some, some blood dripping there, maybe on both sides. Now you're not supposed to be smiling here. You're dying. <laughs> and so there we have the Black Death. We have given a student in class the appearance of having the plague.